I didn't tell him that I had just written a bunch of love poems to him. <laughs> that was what the entire show was. I give this announcement at the beginning and he's like, what? And then he might actually play the guitar while I was doing this. But what I was going to do is actually read, and I have no idea what he's going to play in the background now, but I was going to read two pieces from that. How are you doing with the guitar? Oh, get a strength one. It's good. You don't need anything else like moving. We're good. We don't know what we're doing. Um, no, we don't. Uh, um, this first piece is called Are You yeah, Are You Comfy? Are You? I feel like I'm in your way. What should I do? All right. This first piece is called Eyes. Pretend I'm louder or quieter. Growing up, I, boys didn't like me, kids made fun of me. I was raised to think that I was a plain girl, easily overlooked. I, I look at my eyes, the same eyes that my dad always thought made me look so sad. I always wanted to think that that song, Brown Eyed Girl, could have been about me. How silly of me. I should know better. And maybe that is why I have always loved blue eyes. Eyes not like mine. The eye is a fascinating thing. It's beautiful to study, especially yours. If I were a biologist, I'd take high-res photos of that eye of yours. Maybe magnify it as large as I could so I could study it like a slide under a microscope. I would search for meaning in those mesmerizing patches and shades of that unique blue. They say science can explain all, so, so maybe it can explain why I'm so in love with your eyes or why I'm so in love with you. Eyes are our windows to the outside world, but they're also portals inward, giving us mere mortals fleeting glimpses of what you are inside. I think our colored irises floating on an ocean of light, punctuated with a people, were designed that way, so we could follow each other's gaze closely. I'm watching you. You probably see that. I hope you'll watch me, too. Because scientists have studied the crypts, pigment dots, and furrows of the eye, and scientists are now figuring out that the eye really is the window to the soul. So, maybe I was on the right track by loving your eyes and never wanting to lose sight of them again. So know that I love you 
And that love transcends the killings, the destruction. I have loved you since before I was born. And that is why I am so lucky that I found you. And there may be gunfire, there may be explosions, buildings may crumble. Our Earth's oceans won't save us from our red, giant sun. But what I have for you, this love I have for you, this love transcends all. It has existed. It does exist. It will always exist. You may believe that there are too many things we need to save ourselves from. But we have one constant we cannot forget. My love for you has existed. It does exist. It will always exist. My love for you will outlast the beheadings, will rise above the explosions, transcend the destruction. My love for you transcends the jihadists. It transcends astrophysics. It transcends the earth, the stars. It transcends the elements that make you and I, that make the universe itself. My love for you will always transcend. and traumas. They leave physical and emotional scars that we wear like badges while well knowing these scars scar us. Hide the marks from your face, your, your stomach from when you were hospitalized against your will for months. Hide the bruises around your necks as you leave the country to escape a man who once claimed that he loved you. Force yourself to forget the disappointing diatribes your disappointment of a father gave you while you struggled to be stronger than him, despite him. If you internalize some scars, turn them around and watch your helplessness transform to rage, then to solace, and then insight to help others recover from their own physical and sexual trauma. They say that time heals all wounds, and you wish for your stars to vanish. Your brutish, brutish, brutish demeanor is a blemish you wish would perish. But, but wait a minute. Search for that scar 
on the cleft of your chin from when you scratch when you had the chicken pox. You could swear that scar was there, but where did it go? And then you turn to the one you love. They tell you they've never seen the scars, that you've always been a bright white beam of light, almost too blinding for anyone to fully take in, which is why you can never be fully understood. And this is all they think when they see you. And all they can say is, I love you. And maybe that is the treatment for the traumas and the scars too hard to handle. Any wound is real for scars too hard to handle. And any wound is real as long as you give it the power to take over your soul and fester into a fiendish demon. So, just remember that despite those vanishing scars that are now too taxing to tally, despite those battle scars, you are a blinding light that no one, thankfully, will ever fully understand. <laughs>